How's it going guys? So I've had a couple of people ask me how I mounted my front splitter to the front of my F or to the front of my 124019. And uh, I had used um, this little bracket right here. If you can see it, let me zoom in on it. There we go. That little guy right there. And what that piece is, is it is a piece off of an FY08, FUA FY08, um, another little Banggood special. It is this truck right here. And I haven't seen the specific part on any of these other ones. I only like the one that comes off of this one. There is one similar one, but it doesn't have, it doesn't have these raised up little brackets here which when I had it mounted, you can see my, my little screw holes here. When I had it mounted, I was using that kind of as a, uh, a front guard, kind of like a bumper situation, just in case, you know, anything hit it, it would absorb the, the impact and not, you know, it would not snap my, my splitter. And I just had it mounted like this. You can see these are, I broke the, uh, the little screw hole pieces here and uh so i've decided you know i'm not i'm not gonna buy another one of these parts i mean if you guys want to if you guys want to try it and and you know maybe it'll work better maybe you guys are more careful at driving but um so i will go ahead and put this together back together just to kind of show you how i had it so right here if you uh if you take this front bumper piece out unscrew those guys right there that just slides right out and you, you'll have to squeeze it together a little bit to uh, to get the screw holes to line up you'll have to squeeze these brackets just a tiny bit and uh, then those uh, these little eyelets right here will slide perfectly right in line with those screw holes and I would I mounted it that way to where because it's got sort of a pitch to it. It's it's kind of angled down at this direction whenever you have these guys facing upwards. It's it's kind of at a slope downwards. And so I use that to um, help with the aerodynamics. I use that pitch to uh, not only to use as a front bumper guard, but to help it also keep the spoiler, or the uh, the splitter, sorry, down more towards the ground in, 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 a, in a, at an angle, I would say. Um, but I will put this back together and I will show you how I had it mounted. Screwdriver here. So I just had these, these little bitty tiny screws. Um, I had them tightened down pretty tight. So the, uh, I don't know what size screws these are. These are just some little extras that I had in my toolbox. Um, they are pointed and at first because I didn't have my Dremel until just a few days ago I uh, I just poked a little hole with a hot safety pin and then threaded these guys right into the holes and so let me get this to line up with one of them Sometimes I gotta go from the bottom. So you can see that's not going anywhere. And it also, it gives you a brace up under your splitter here. So that's, that's, an, that's reinforcing all of this so that way it doesn't have a tendency to flex. That was another reason why I picked this piece. Um, I just had it spare laying around. I didn't actually order the part. Um, because the part that comes is actually three pieces, I believe. And this is the center section that connects the top and the bottom piece. I'll actually show you on my FY08 after I put this other screw in. There we go. You can see that sits nice and snug. It's not going anywhere at all. The only problem was um, the uh, the eyelets that came out right here to screw in 
were super, super thin. They weren't this thick plastic like everything else was. Um, and even, even if you tried to just cut those off and drill a hole in here, it would still, it would be too thick to fit into the front bumper slot here, as well as there's not enough clearance there, you know, to really keep the, the splitter from bumping into your front, to your, uh, front bar there, that little gold bar, your, your, uh, your splitter would be basically right up in it. And I mean, that might be, that might be a preferred style for some people, but I kind of liked it. I liked it to be out just a touch like that, right where it was. I will grab this here and I'll show you guys what piece. Gotta take this body off because it's a little easier to see. And I only mount this body with four screws. Um, I know some people would probably disagree, but I use the uh, two front screws here and then these two in the bottom back here, right there and right there. And that keeps the body on nice and steady and it makes it easy because of the way that I mount my 2S. I'll show you once I get this, uh, this body pulled off here. So if you guys, if you guys like what I'm doing, if you could just uh, give me a like and a subscribe, ring the notification bell, it'll let you know anytime that I'm about to post a new video. Um, I am actually currently working on the 124019. Um, I will be going brushless tomorrow, so I'll probably do a nice little time-lapse build of that. And then whenever I get my FPV gear in, we will be able to do the process of uh, putting the uh, pan-tilt servo gimbal mount and uh, fit that to uh, my camera here. I just got one of these little bitty cheapy guys here. Hold on. I got this little Ishin transmitter. It's supposed to get about um, 500 meters of range, I believe, four to 500. And uh, just this little cheapo camera, nothing fancy. I'll also be running my uh, Dumbora CX-6, of course. And uh, instead of the uh, standard receiver with the gyro um, that comes with the X-6, mine actually came damaged um, and I thought it was the transmitter at first but I had already ordered one of these guys because I wanted it for the lights I want to be able to run lights on the 124019 because I'm going to be making it an FPV car and I want to drive at night and uh, so I needed this to go ahead and, and you know make me a little more visible to other cars and stuff out in the parking lot there that I drive in but whenever I uh, Whenever I tried this receiver out, the uh, the range worked just fine. I had my uh, I had my wife sitting there in the in the living room holding the receiver connected to um, my ESC a battery and a servo, and I went walking um, with the with the transmitter itself and uh, walked clear out to the parking lot and she's sitting in the apartment with the door closed and there's actually three, four buildings between us. And I walked all the way almost to Target parking lot, which was, you know, about, it was about, you know, 150 meters, I want to say. Um, but I was still, you know, it was going through buildings and around cars and everything like that. I was, I was going in a straight line. I wasn't up on a hill or anything. So, I mean, that, that tells me right there that it's gonna have some really, really good range, and I'm excited to test it out. So, back to it. So, the piece that we are going to be going after, go ahead and take this off to excuse my uh, sloppy wiring. So, this is, this is what I was talking about here. This is how I mount my battery here, because I like to use a full-size 2S, and there's no way that it's gonna fit in that battery tray. 
Plus, I run all of my light cables and everything down through the battery tray. And I use, if you've seen in my earlier videos, I use this, um, this empty little bucket here, or box that sits on the back. I, I, guess, it's, I guess it's just cosmetic. But uh, if you take the screws out and open it up, it's completely empty inside. So I just ran some wires in and uh, put my on off switch for my for my headlights and taillights here to uh, to turn on that way. That way it's not just constantly draining battery power, having them on all the time. <clears throat> I know I'm rambling. I talk a lot, especially when I'm tired. It's actually still pretty early on in the day. I'm just exhausted. <laughs> Let's see. Those guys are off for now. Yeah, I've been kind of experimenting and working and doing a lot of stuff with this, so I haven't I haven't put all 10 screws back in the cage and all 10 screws back in the body because there's 10 in each. Um, I just use the most essential ones, which has worked pretty well, honestly. It means a lot less wrenching until my wow stick gets here. Because all I've got, I don't have any uh, screwdriver tips with these, with any small enough hexes like this. side comes out on the bottom. All right, that side, so that means it's going to be this side. Hold on that wire. <laughs> I'll take this off camera for just a second so I can get underneath it. There. Come on. This one likes to be stubborn. I might have to uh, go in and stretch that wire out a little bit just so I've got more room to work with when I'm trying to do stuff like this. All right, so that is disconnected. Go. Go ahead and pull this power switch out. Come on in there, buddy. There we go. Now, it's gonna make it easier if I pull my battery out. leave this hot glued on because it's just too much whenever you whenever you have to work on it all the time and you're trying to take the body on and off it's just way too much to leave that hot glued on the way that they had it I think it was right here I thought about putting it here but then still you know it would it would just take way too much so I might I might move it down here on the servo or something that way you can just kind of reach up under here and flip it <laughs> okay pull that out of the way so the piece that we're going for let me go ahead and zoom in on it for you. There, sorry about the shaky camera, guys. So, this right here, this is the piece that we're going for. 
Let me go ahead and take it out and show you. It's, it's just four screws, super easy to come out. You will have to uh, take this body mount and just raise it up out of the way. Okay, so these guys are a little bit longer. Oh, sorry, get that on camera. These guys are a little bit longer, so you want to set those off to the side. Just so you remember where they go in case you you have a problem with misplacing screws and stuff. I do sometimes, but other times I'm pretty good, like today, keeping them nice, neat little piles. Oh, look at that. But I took this apart. Look right there. I'm missing a screw there. Right here. So I know I've got spares, and this one's coming loose now. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten that back down. Oh, whoops. Oh, my guess. Or am I going the wrong way now? Or is it just stripped? It's stripped. That's what it is. Okay. Well. Yeah, it's not. Wow, that's weird. Can't believe I never noticed that. Well, I also haven't haven't uh, messed with the shocks or anything on this yet. to the underside here. Grab another screw out. So we don't lose it. Move these out of the way. Do we? What am I doing? And then these two right here. And look at that. That's something else I didn't notice. Factory put one rounded tip and one flat tip. So yeah, that's kind of funny. Like I said, I haven't even, I haven't even gotten as far as taking this one apart that, that much. The only reason I took mine apart was to, uh, I was thinking about using some of the parts to build something else out of but uh i decided just to uh scrap it and use it for extra parts on his plus i pulled out the uh motor esc and the, the receiver to uh throw in something else probably gonna throw it in like a k959 or something or an a959 whichever i like them both but uh probably the a959 so if you look at this these two screws that i just took out That flat, flat head, and that was on this side right here, and then this rounded head, that was on this side. And that came from the factory, <laughs> which I have another rounded tip since it's up here. I'm just going to throw one of these round ones in, throw this back into my spare screws. Okay, so my pieces are already falling down there. So, this is the piece right here. You can see it's got our two screw holes here. And they're really flat. And that's actually why mine ended up breaking off because every little bump and collision is, uh, it puts stress on it. And because it's already slightly angled, you can see that it's it's angled downward at that pitch, like I was saying earlier. And uh, every little bump, it just, it likes to flex downward here, right on that, uh, right on the point where those screws connect. And uh, so it puts a lot of strain on that weak plastic right there. And uh, after, after like two days, mine ended up snapping off. So I will be designing a, uh, well, I have designed I'm just, uh, I have to go down to uh, Home Depot to get the aluminum to make basically a better version of this, but uh, it'll be, it's not gonna have all of these recesses and just little bars. It's actually gonna be a plate 
I'm gonna cut out some triangles in it so that way it reduces the weight and gives it a little more strength. But, so what we did here is, uh, let me move this out of the way now. Take the, here, put the body clips in this just to make it easier. And I've thrown bigger body clips in mine just because they're easier for my fingers to grab hold of. Those tiny ones were just ridiculous. I kept dropping them and I'd almost lose them. I was like, nope, I'm putting in my big clips. All right, so. There we go, come on, stay there. All right, so all we're gonna do is take out these screws. This screw here and that screw there. You guys can see my uh, my chassis is a little bit bent there on the front. Speed bumps are no joke, man. This car is fast. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do here is um, so this is the upper side of the car here that we're looking at, and I'm going to mount it so that these little hooks right here are facing upward, just like that. And you can see here I have put screws in the screw holes there. Um, I just did it for, just for looks. I, I didn't do it for any other purpose than that. But it could also be a point at which you could, uh, you could throw some kind of washer weighted system on those screws to help kind of suck that, that splitter down, down to the ground a little more. Screws flying everywhere. So, you watch right here. I'm gonna back this camera out just a little bit so you guys get a, get a better view of what's going on here. Come on. Oh, wrong direction. Southern came out there for a second. <laughs> so, so there's our two screw holes that we were going to mount from right there. I'm just going to slide it right in the front here. And you can see it fits absolutely perfectly. It is a glove going in there. It's pretty sturdy, but like I said, you take a couple bumps and that thing is, that thing is toast <laughs> because of that pinch point, right? Where those screws connect. So now, and I don't know if you guys can see in there, but those holes are just about lined up perfectly. You can see that. See, there's one hole and there's the other. So this one I really didn't even have to squeeze together. It just lined right up. And uh, hopefully I can find uh, the link to this product, product, <laughs> and uh, I will post it down below. I'm sure I should be able to find it on Banggood. But um, oh, what was I gonna say there? I lost my train of thought. But yeah, like I said, um, I'll uh, I'll post the link of it down below. Um, but the part number is. Pull my book out here. Part number is right here. It is FYHFZ02. Let me let me actually bring that up where you guys can see it. But there's not a glare on it. So that that bracket right there, and it's actually it looks like it's just two pieces instead of three. But yeah, it's just that little bracket right there, that specific one. Because let's look here. There was a similar one that um, would not work 
the same just because there's no there's no brace for the front there to uh, to keep it from popping your your uh, splitter off. Anyway, let's not worry about that. I will, uh, yeah, like I said, I'll try to link the product below. But right here, here's what we did. I'm gonna take this apart again. So you guys can see here. And I, I'm not gonna use this because this is my son's truck, so I'm just, I'm just putting it on there just so you guys know how it fits and what I did to make it work with the, with the splitter. So what I did here, let me move this out of the way, is I lined up the front splitter, lined up these holes right here with this bar. And when you put this splitter on, if you slide it right up there, right up to it, and you line up those bars just in between or just right on the outside of these two lines not only do you have that brace up underneath it but that bar if you can see it hold on that bar lines up perfectly with those screw holes and so what i what i did is i i poked a little hole with a with a hot safety pin and uh, then use those guide holes to start my screws. But um, what I would do the next time is just take my, my tiny little Dremel bit and very carefully just bore out a tiny little spot in those that I could feed my screws in. But yeah, it's, it's a really, really easy mod, really easy. Fits like a glove. Like I said, the only mod, the only thing that you have to do to it is to screw the screw holes in into this front bar right here. But yeah, that's it, guys. That's um, that's the uh, front splitter mount that I figured out just because I had the spare parts laying around. So if you guys do want to spend the money, get that spare part. It's it's worth it if you're a careful driver. But if you're someone like me, you might want to go ahead and try to improvise a aluminum mount situation and probably what i'll end up doing is once i make the aluminum mount i will uh try to either make them in a high volume that way i can i can send them out to people or i might just uh i might just pass the plans on for free just so everybody can make them because uh this 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 hobby should be for everybody so that's that's exactly what i'm gonna do once i get the plans made i will show you here kind of my little drawing that I have mocked up for it. So, if you look at this bracket here, so this is just a, a just a rough drawing off of a sketch that I did here to uh, to better fit this design right here and what I needed it to fit to go into the front of the car and also have support under the um, under the sides of the splitter itself. So basically, this winged piece right here is designed to sit perfectly underneath in this recess right here between this divot and this divot. And I will link I will link the product for this. This, um, it's a spoiler from a smaller car, but uh, I've used it for a front splitter. Like I I've, I've had a, I haven't said it before, but um, I've had a couple failed attempts with uh, trying to hot glue this one. So at some point I'll get a prettier one and uh, keep it, keep it nice. And now that I know how I'm going to mount it. But this, this right here, so this is designed to slot into this front recess right here it's just designed to uh to slide right in where those screw holes are just like that and then that the rest of that underneath there mimics the support if you can see the support that would be there on this plastic piece without impinging and and pulling that um 
that splitter together in the middle like this does because it's too wide. Um, and then I have also added this front bumper piece right here to, I'm going to bend it up at an angle to match the angle of the original front bumper piece that comes on. So that not only am I getting protection for the front of the splitter here, but it's also kind of absorbing the impact for the vehicle. And then there's a buckle point here, as opposed to it crumpling the middle of, of, the, uh, of the part here that I'm going to make. Sorry, I had to take a quick little break there. Um, so where I was, where I was at is um, this piece right here is basically designed to uh, not only act as a bumper, but also as a crumple point to keep the rest of this frame from bending. And what I might end up doing is running a small support across the center that stops right here and bolts into the top and then another smaller support here just to brace it, make sure everything stays nice and straight and that this, this nice little, um, what is that called? I can't even think of the, the shape right now, but this, this front recessed piece that uh, matches up with this right here is uh, the crumple point. And it is, it is basically going to be the weakest point on that piece that way it can be bent inwards and then bent back outwards without bending the rest of the frame or snapping one of the edges off of this splitter even though they're cheap like waiting for you know two three weeks to have a front splitter to run with is is ridiculous you know but yeah that's it guys um super simple super easy um once i figure out the the price of the product, I will, uh, or figure out the uh, the link for the product, I will link it down below. And uh, that way you guys can use my code to get it off and that will help with the channel. You guys probably will get a little bit of a discount too by using it. So it definitely won't hurt to do it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, um, if you guys like what you see, like, subscribe. I'll be here making more videos as always. Um, much love and uh, we'll see you guys next time.